All right, my children, so as the title implies, what I'm going to show you how to do today is how to get Agar to stand still, how to pursue you, how to get him back into his who, how to get him back into his position, and how to get him to patrol, which I need to do right now. That was what he was supposed to do at the beginning, but I screwed that up. So yeah, so he should be moving right now. There we go. And if he ever sees me, then he should start pursuing, just like that. And then if he ever loses sight of me, then he just goes back to his position. So, all right, that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. Um, yeah, so let's get started. All right, so let's talk about the actual level first, and then we'll get on to, like, um, the... Yeah, we'll get on to the enemy, and then we'll get on to... Um, no, I guess we'll just avoid the player. <clears throat> there, it, there's no need. All right, so the first thing I did was I created a node 3D um, for the root, and um, that's where all the elements are going to be. Um, it's just going to be the root of the scene, your, the root of your level. Then I just added a directional light. That way we had some light in a direction. And then after that, I gave it a the world environment to light the scene. Then I had added the player and the enemy. I'll show you how to add those uh, later, or how to construct them later, and then you can just drop them into your level. And then after that, um, I have another Node 3D, and this one's going to have all the positions that I want the guard to go into. So as you can see here, I have position 1, 2, 3, and then finally its last position. And that, I have a reset guard rotation. Uh, look at over here, and if it's a guard that stands at a post and it's not patrolling, then what's going to happen is um, once it goes back to its post, I need it to rotate back into its original position. And after that, we have a navigation region 3D. And underneath all that, we have all of these um, objects here, such as the floor and the blocks. Um, the way the navigation region 3D works is that it's going to create a walkable, uh, walkable mesh for our enemy here. As you can see here, there's nothing here. And then we hit bake, um, it creates things like this. So you'll see like little empty uh, areas and stuff. And all that means is that if the area is empty, the enemy can't walk there. That's all that means. In order to do that, you need to make sure that all of your elements that you want the navigation uh, region to consider during its bake, it needs to be a child of. I mean, they need to be children of the navigation region. We're gonna go into the uh, enemy. Uh, I guess I should go into the player first. Um, the player, um, if you don't know how to make a player, uh, I actually have a video already. It's pretty much the exact same thing. I just took away all the extra doohickeys. So yeah, um, all it is is just literally um, a character body 3D, closing shape, and a camera. That is it. And all I did was, um, that's important that you should know, is that I added it to a group called player. It's really the only thing you need to know. Okay, let's get rid of that. So next up, let's do the enemy. All right, so the enemy is a bit of a beast. <sighs> All right, let's just go down the line. So the enemy itself is going to be a it's a character body 3D. Then after that, um, I have a collision shape. After that, I have a mesh uh, instance 3D, and then I added a capsule to this. Uh, new capsule mesh, and all that did was allow me to see where the hell the enemy was on the screen. Um, without this, um, you're just gonna, you won't get anything. Then after that, I have an enemy FOV. That's uh, FOV is just field of view. This area is gonna be for whenever the player player ever collides with this uh, area, then the enemy is gonna know that the player has the potential to be seen. That's all that's gonna do. Then I have this little object here. I modeled it in Blender, but gave it an area. No, not an area. I gave it a collision shape. Now, if you want to know how to get the collision shape to look or to match the shape of your object, all you have to do is click on the mesh itself, go to this single convex collision sibling, and then it should automatically create this um, collision shape 3D, and it should match the dimensions, the mesh that you have dropped in. Then after that, we need a navigation agent 3D. And all this is gonna do is it's going to allow the enemy to read this um, this navigation mesh that we've created earlier. That's all that's gonna do. Then after that, I have a me 
Mesh Instance 3D. Oh, yeah, that's right. This is for the nose. This is so I knew uh, which way was forward. Um, in Godot, if you don't know, let me just move my scrawny ass over here to the side. Um, here in the z-axis or z-axis, um, positive numbers are, are backwards for whatever reason, and then negative numbers are forward. So this is just so I knew for future reference uh, which way it was facing when it came to um, causing the enemy to rotate. That's that's all that was for. <clears throat> okay, and then after that we have a timer. Um, I'll explain what the timer does later. Um, this was really more for like an optimization thing, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, you don't need it, but that's why I have it. And then after that, we need a field of view cast, which is actually a ray cast. And if this ray cast ever collides with the player, then we know, and we know, or the enemy knows that um, it can see the player, and then it's going to change its date to pursuit. So the first thing I needed to do was I need to grab a couple of the nodes when the enemy was ready to be used. So all I did was create um, three on ready variables, get nav map, map, nav agent, and the field of view caster. The get the nav map, literally um, when the enemy is thrown into the level, it's gonna get the parent, which should be the root, the root of the scene. And then it's gonna look for the node navigation region 3D, which is this. And that should give us access to 3D and any functions that we need to influence. Uh, I got the nav agent, which is the agent ourselves, which is right here, same deal. Now with the ray caster, same thing. Um, we need to be able to call that later down the line. So after that, I did an export variables uh, speed, 100. And this was just for me to um, very quickly change the speed. So if the enemy was too slow or too fast, um, I could just quickly change it. That way I didn't have to go into the script. That's all that was for. Um, after that, I created two other variables, all points. This here is a list. Um, when the enemy is dropped into the level, what I'm going to do is I'm going to append every single point that I want the enemy to go to um, within this list. And then it's going to pick a point within this list to go to. And then the next point is just so we have a int, an integer to go from um, elements within that list. So if we was on element one, it would go to element two, and then if it was on element two, it would go to element three, and so on and so forth. Three booleans here. Um, each of them are doing something different. So the first one is um, the pursuit state. So at the very beginning, um, the enemy shouldn't be in the pursuit state at all. So we're gonna have that as false. If it ever goes to true, then the enemy will start to follow the the player um, as you saw earlier um, then we have um, is at post this is for guards that are standing in position um, so if they're standing in position and the the player just walks across to them um, then they should go into the pursuit state but if that never happens then they should stay put so <clears throat> is for and then we have the scene player um, obviously if the player has been seen you know when they were you know running across them or whatever then um, then we're going to change that to true, and then it's going to trigger something else. I'll explain what this negative number is for later. In my testing, I don't honestly, I honestly don't think I need it, but it's more of a failsafe. And then after that, we have um, an export variable called is patrolling guard, and and all this is is I just wanted a, a pretty much a button at the tip here or at the uh, inspector of the enemy, which allowed me to decide whether if the enemy was going to be standing in position or if it was gonna be a, a guard that was like patrolling, you know, the area or whatever. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the enemy to a group. Um, and we're gonna call that group enemy. Then after that, we have a for loop. And what this for loop is gonna be doing is gonna be grabbing all those positions that I was talking about earlier. For x in get parent. Again, remember, um, the parent will be the root of your level. Then we're just gonna look for the note all uh, patrolling points for guard one. Um, you can always change this, if, like if it's a different guard or whatever, you can always do like um, guard 2, guard 3, guard 4. Then um, get um, all the children. So essentially, it's just saying get each and every single one of these points. And then in the list of all points, append whatever that point that you're on right now. Um, I just want the global position. I want that to be inside that list. Making sure that the positions have a floor.
So that's what this is for. Okay. Next up, let's create an input uh, for the UI down, and this is just to reset the pursuit state. So if the enemy's ever in the pursuit state, I can just cancel it out. So I can pretend that we escaped. Um, then after that, I have another conditional here, and that one is going to be looking for um, whether or not it's going to be looking for if the guard is a patrolling guard, and excuse me, or if the guard is in the pursuit state. If one of those two things are true, it's going to check the alert state. I'll explain. I'll explain that function later. This is a custom function. Don't worry about it. And then after that, we have another condition here. Um, if this is a if it's not a, a, a patrolling guard, meaning it's a guard that's like. Um, yeah, it's a guard that's uh, standing at its position or it's standing at its post and it's not in the pursuit state, then we're going to go back to the original post. And again, that's just a, another custom function, which I'll go over later. And then in here, we need the move and slide, and that is before the character body 3D. It needs that, otherwise the enemy is just going to kind of stay put in its position, which you don't want. So, Okay, so let's start off with the uh, check alert state. So if it's a patrolling guard or if it's in the pursuit state, it's going to look and find out if the guard is not in the, the pursuit state, right? Yeah, I don't know. Wait, that's kind of redundant. Okay, um, I guess it's not redundant. Okay, anyway, so it's gonna check for one of these two states, and if it's true, it's gonna look and see if it's, if we're not in the, the pursuit state, that means that we're gonna be patrolling, and if we are in the pursuit state, then we are gonna pursue. So that's that. Yes, so now let's go into those. So. If we're not pursuing, then we're patrolling. And all this is gonna do is, first thing we want is this await get tree dot process frame. And all this is actually for is just to make sure that we don't get an error. And that error is, good, we got two of those errors. This error right here. It says here, patrolling a navigation server map query failed because it was made before the first map synchronization. So that's all this is doing. It's just making sure that error goes the fur away. <clears throat> Next up, we have a variable called dirder. That is my way of saying direction because I was tired of putting direction. Um, but yeah, this this is just to create a variable. We're going to overwrite that variable so it doesn't really matter. Um, it's just there for that. Then <clears throat> of that, we're going to grab the navigation agent, which is attached to the player, which is this thing right here. And we're gonna look for the target position. This has a built-in function called target position. And all we're gonna do is say, it's gonna be equal to the all points list, and it's gonna find one of the, the points within that list. And remember, that list was created um, when the enemy was dropped in. So it's gonna find out which point that is. Next point should start at zero, so it will be at the very first point. And then after that, um, yeah. Then after that, we're gonna have um, the direction here or this variable overwritten with a direction, and that direction is gonna be the nav agent getting another built-in function here called uh, get next path position, and then we need to minus that by the global position of the enemy itself. That way, um, it takes into account um, the, the area that it's currently preoccupying. Then after that, um, we need to get the directions uh, to normalize. That way, if the enemy is going um, in an angle, let me see, in an angle like this, um, it's not going faster than if it was going up, down, left, or right. Or, I guess in our case, because it's 3D, uh, forward, back, uh, left, or right. And then if it goes in any of these angles um, like this, the speed is consistent throughout. It's never gonna go faster when it's going diagonal. So I guess I should go like this way, but yeah. And then um, we have the velocity. Um, this is to make sure that the enemy obviously moves. Um, I did velocity.lerp, direction times speed times delta, and then this is the amount of influence that it has. Um, the reason why I use lerp is just to keep the enemy from teleporting from you know point a to point b to point c or whatever um, this allows it to go from point a and then slowly go to point b or you know point one point two point three or whatever and then after that i have the direction here um, i guess it's important to note that the direction right now is a vector three we've converted it to a vector three um this is just to make sure 
um, we have the direction of, or the vector of y at zero. This is just to make sure that when the enemy is, is looking at the player and it's chasing them, it doesn't like rotate like this. <laughs> it's just to make sure it stays up straight like that. And then of that, a uh, look at function. And then all we want it to do is take the global transformation origin of the enemy itself, meaning we want to take essentially its center. And then we also want to add the direction. So whatever direction it's facing, that's the way it should be looking. All right, and that takes care of the patrol state. Next up, we're going to do the pursuit state. So let's just say um, the you know we have the enemy here, and then the player just kind of walks by, and then it triggers the pursuit state. This is what this is going to do. Um, we have a couple of variables here. This is based off of the nav agent, if I'm not mistaken. First thing we need to do is we need to get the enemy's current map position. So wherever the enemy is at on the map itself, we need to get that position. So that's going to be based off of its global position. And then after that, we need to get the current target, which is going to be the next position that it's going to go to, which should be the player. Um, but we haven't we haven't told it that yet. So again, we're going to grab the nav agent and then tell it we want you to go to the next path position. And then after that, we want to change its direction. So the direction is going to be equal to the current target, which will be the player, and then it needs to minus off the the uh, enemy's current position. That way, it can take into account um, its own its own space, um, and then it's going to dot normalize. This is just to make sure that it doesn't offshoot. And then after that, we're going to do velocity is going to be equal to change direction times speed times delta. And again, um, this is just to get the enemy to move. And then what the the way or the direction that's going to be moving in is going to be um, in the look at direction. So it's going to look at a vector three. And that vector three is going to get a global variable. I'm going to show you how to set that up in just a second. It's going to be the player's current position of x. It's going to be the self global transform drop excuse me it's gonna be the origin the transform origin of the enemy itself is y and it's going to be the player's z axis or z axis um and then after that we need a vector three zero <coughs> excuse me then after that we need a vector three which is going to be a zero on the x a one on the y and a zero on the z and that's just so it knows where the floor is again Okay, so let's go into setting up the global variable. So the way global variables work, I have a script here that I'm just going to use for demonstration. So let's just say this is your global, um, your global script that you have, and this is your variable, and you want it to be accessed throughout the entire game. So what you're going to do is go to your project settings, go to auto load. You're going to find within your scripts. You're going to find that one, which is going to be delete me. <clears throat> and then after you have it here in the path, you're just going to add it here. And now you should have access to it everywhere. So as you can see, I already have the global here. And I'm just going to delete that one. And all the global one has is just one variable. And that variable is the player's current position. So the player's current position, I guess I got to get player, player alert. The player's current position is actually um, updated every single frame thanks to the physics process here. So all we're doing in, in the players, it's very important, the player's physics process is we're getting the global variable of player position and we're just equaling it to the player's global position. That's it. That's all that's happening. And now the enemy will have access to that without even having to be on the scene. So. All right, next up. So let's say you have a guard that's you know standing staying put. Let me just get rid of this, get rid of this, go to the enemy, and we are going to make sure that you are a stander. There we go. So all this is going to do is if the enemy is if the enemy ever leaves its position, um, and the pursuit state ends. So it's not gonna be in this position and the pursuit state ends, it needs to go back to that position. So that's all this is gonna do. So um, it says, if it's not at position, it's literally gonna do the exact same code as the patrolling enemy. 
excuse me, the only difference is um, instead of it going for the next point, we want it to go to the very first point within the list. Yeah, within the list of points, so it should be point one. I mean, you can have it as another point if you want, but I'm just using this as an example. Um, you should probably put a different list for, or a different position for different guards. So if you have a patrolling guard and a standing guard, this shouldn't be, this should be a different variable. Um, I'm just doing this because it's one guard that's swapping between a patrolling guard and a standing guard. So yeah, I think the only difference is that, is that this uses the, uh, that the patrolman uses the uh, next point variable, while this one just uses the very first, um, the very first element within the list, and then the look at is also the same. That way, it's pointing in the direction that it's facing. And then after that, if it ever gets to its post, meaning it reaches that destination, it's just going to change its direction. So this right here is just going to make sure it gets that nice, um, that nice rolling rotation um, that I showed you earlier. I'm just going to go right here. So when the enemy comes here and looks at you like that and it goes back to its position, it just slowly rotates back in there. Um, I would like to show you um, it just snapping back to the position, um, but for whatever reason, if I take this off, it will just continue to run <laughs> to the, the end of the earth. So trust me, you, you just you, trust me, you want this, okay? <laughs> anyway. So to get to do that, um, the very first thing you need to do is um, get its default rotation. And that's a bit misleading because that's not really what we're getting. We're actually just getting the post guard look at. And then we're just going to force the enemy to rotate in that direction very slowly. So again, we're just going to get the root of the level. And then we're going to look for that node. So you can see a reset, reset guard rotation and then post it guard one look at. And we're going to want the global position of that. And then after that, one second, after that, what we're going to want to do is we're going to reset the rotation. So if we didn't, if we didn't have this, then the enemy once it got to its position again, so let, and it would come back to its position, it would never rotate. So now it's looking at you know maybe the wall or it's looking at a position that you want. So that's that's why we're doing this. So we're gonna reset that position or reset that rotation. So to make sure that um, when it's back in the position, it goes back uh, to facing. So it's gonna take the basis here, and what a basis is, if I remember correctly, is just taking the uh, the three axes, um, you know, um, x, y, and the z, and we're going to have it look at the default rotation, which is the post-it guard look at. And we're going to multiply that by the negative number. Now, I don't know uh, why this happens sometimes, um, but putting a negative number here sometimes fixes it. So, excuse me. So sometimes when you are adding your... When you're adding your little markers here for them to look at, um, sometimes the enemy will look in the opposite direction of that marker. I don't know why it does it. Um, sometimes it does it. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, so I just gave it, or I gave the enemy a negative number. Where is it at here? Negative number, right here. So if it ever did that, I could just quickly just put a, a negative one on it and then it will just rotate it in the other direction so that's the, why i have that here again sometimes it happens sometimes it don't so this is more like a contingency plan versus a like a necessary thing again if you can figure out why it does that then you know you don't need this but i have no freaking idea why it does it so that's what that's for so with this here it's just going to get the uh, default rotation and it's going to make sure that it's stored into a variable that way we can use it then what we're going to want is we're going to want to get our current rotation um, this really is um, this is really is for a conversion for whatever reason gets the current object rotation and stores it prevents quadris quadril whatever the hell this word is <laughs> to rotation conversion error um, again this was giving me an error and it wasn't working so this fixed it but again I don't exactly know um, what was causing what's causing the error so 
Um, but yeah, this is just getting the current rotation that we have, and then it's making a conversion from um, the quadrigen, quadrigen, whatever the hell this word is, <laughs> and uh, the rotation, and just converging, converting them. Um, that way, they're both consistent or coherent. And then after that, we're going to take that basis, and then we're going to apply the current rotation, and then slurp. Uh, slurp is a lot like um, the lerp that we had earlier where it takes like point A and point B and it just kind of slowly moves it across there. Um, this is the same thing, but this one considers the angles, which is what we need for when we're slowly rotating it. Um, if we didn't have this, then the rotation, when the enemy got to its position, let's say it was, uh, let's see here, it was going like, you know, it was, the, the enemy was going like this, it would just quickly snap like this not giving the player any time to react so it going like this and then slowly going back into its position will give the player um at least some some time to um react as well as it just looking better than you know that kind of you know teleportation movement that the uh or ninja movement that the guard would do and then after that we have uh velocity equals uh Vector three zero, and this is just to keep the enemy from moving. That's essentially what that's for. So yeah, okay. I did not explain this. Okay, so so far I've been telling you that um, you know when a target is reached or whatever, the enemy will do this and that and the other. It doesn't do it automatically. So in your navigation agent three D that's attached to the enemy itself, you need to go into the node. And you just need to attach a signal called target reached. And down here, you'll see it says connect. And then when you connect it, this nice little function will, you know, populate your um, will populate your script. After that, you can add your code, and then it does all these nice things. So, first thing we're gonna do is whenever the enemy reaches um, a position, um, we need to find out if it's a patrolling guard or not. So if it's a patrolling guard, then all it's going to do is it's just going to take the next point and it's going to go point one. So as you remember before, um, next point um, is within the list of elements. Or it's not within the, the list of elements, but it's influencing the element that we're currently on. So if we're on element zero and we reach, um, and we reach element zero, then it's going to roll it over to one and then it's going to go to that next position. And then here... It says, if next position is greater than or equal to all points not size, so all that's saying is that if it ever reaches the end of the list, I need you to go to next point is equal to all points negative 1, and this just brings it all the way back to the uh, very beginning, right? Gets last element in the list. Yeah. And then it's going to reset the next point back to 0. That way, it just starts to loop all over again. So the enemy is just going to go from point A to point B to point C, and then back to A. That's all that is. And then here is if the guard is not a patrolling guard, so that means it's a guard that's posted, and it's not in its pursuit state, then a post is going to be equal to true, meaning that it's made it back to its position. Okay. Now to explain the timer. So as you remember earlier, I was talking about this timer. Um, this timer is just to check the enemy sight. So I want to check it every, what, every fifth of a second or so. Um, that way it's, um, it's not checking every single frame. So whenever this timer um, counts down, it's going to check the sight. Excuse me. And that's going to get a new target. So first up, we're going to see what this thing is doing. So what is all this stuff here? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, I'll explain that stuff later. So once it uses the check site, it's going to see if the player has been seen or not. And if it has been seen, then the ray cast is going to look at the player's position, and then it's going to find out what the floor is. It's going to check if the player was seen or not. Um, this uh, scene player will change dependent on if the, uh, the player is um, within the area. 3D. So if the area 3D, if the player ever enters area 3D, as you can see, if body dot is in group player, then player is seen is true. And if it ever exits this little box, this little box right here, then the player can't be seen anymore. So that's what that's doing. And then after that, if the uh, field of view caster, which is that ray cast here, is ever colliding, um, it's going to find out. Um, 
it's going to get us well, excuse me i'm going to create a variable called collider meaning it's going to store whatever it's colliding with then here it's going to have um the field of view of caster dot get collider again whatever it's colliding with and then it's going to check what on earth it's colliding with so it's going to say if the collider is in the group of player meaning we know that we're at the player um, then the pursuit state is going to be true and then if it was a guard that was at a post then it's no longer at its post and then that should allow the enemy to start you know running after the player so that's all this is doing now i do want to explain something i'm going to put on visible here as you can see here when i'm in the uh box right here i'm not sure if you can see that um, the ray cast right here it it follows the player but as you noticed he's not running after me and the reason for that is because the um, the ray cast um, function of is colliding takes into account its vector length so if it ever collides with with something its vector length is no longer that point it's from the beginning which will be the enemy to whatever point it's currently touching which would be this block so this point right here is actually just being ignored and it's taking into account this uh, this wall which is why it's not pursuing me but if i go right in front of it right now you can see it now pursues me so that's 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 why this is working the way it's working okay now let's go to the next target so this here is super simple all it's doing is um, it's just getting the new target. So if the uh, player is ever you know seen or whatever, then this is just going to change it to that particular target or that particular position. And we know this because I told it to grab the player's current position. So whatever that new target is is technically just the player's position. So that's all that's doing. It's just making sure that the uh, enemy can you know go after the player. So I think that's everything. I'm not sure if I missed anything. If I did, I apologize profusely. And is there anything that I forgot to mention? Do 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 da do do do. No. Boop 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 boop. Um, oh, actually, there is something I needed to, to mention. Um, the navigation uh, region 3D. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, I know, right? In fact, it even says within the docs themselves, navigation, that it's experimental. So I, I don't know if this is gonna exist in the future. I'm pretty confident it will. It might go by a different name, but as of right now, um, it's just in the experimental phase. And because of that, <laughs> there are a lot of like, it's very finicky. So for one, for, for one thing here um, that I did to help my agent out, is I increase the radius. By default, <clears throat> this thing is at 0.5. If we bake this, you can see it's very close. Um, I just increased it to one to make the uh, areas a little bit bigger. This was to help the uh, enemy from like running into walls. So let's say this was like a wall or whatever, and the enemy would just kind of, you know, go right in here and it would just stay there, <laughs> never moving. So this helped it um, out, just avoid the walls a little bit better. And then the other thing that I did within the enemy itself is I just took its desired path from one meter to 0.7 and this seemed to help it like navigate across the corners of like the blocks so you know if I can do blocks Jesus Christ so like the blocks right here uh, the, if it ever like got one of the corners it would sometimes get like caught and it wouldn't it wouldn't move anymore so this just helped it like walk around those um those corners a little bit better so those are the two things that i did um to help that out so yeah i don't think i missed anything else um all this code um and the project files and everything will be in my github i'll leave the link below so if you're lost on anything just literally parse the code you can use it for whatever the hell you want i don't care uh, as long as you learn something. So I think that's, I think that's everything. So, um, thank you so much for watching, my children. Until next time, farewell.